if God created all things, all things, then you are saying something very similar to what I am saying. If God created Satan and Satan is the archetype for evil, then God created evil. Okay, so all the tautology. So it's, no, it's not called. It's not. It's not a tautology. That's not true. Hold on, hold on. So what I would say is, is that two two levels. Number one, I don't believe. Put it this way. Let's talk physics for a second. Okay, cold doesn't actually exist. Cold is the absence of heat. Just like darkness is the absence of light. Check any science book. That's the truth. What I'm saying is, in the same sense that cold or or darkness exists, that's kind of how evil is. It's the absence of good. It doesn't exist in and of itself. Now, God created beings who have the, who have a will, and it, therefore they have the capacity, the ability, I'll say, to choose to do evil. And so that might be homosexuality. It might be robbing a bank. It might be writing a story like the Contentions of Horace and Seth, where you have two deities having sex with one another, male deities, and so forth. It could be any any of those things. But if God create good and God create evil, I, the Lord God, do all these things. And then he gives you a choice and gives you a, a will, like you say, then that means he's tempting you, brother. I don't know how y'all don't see the um how easy this is. But I just want to also say this, brothers, you don't need to try to defend God. God don't need you to defend him. All you got to do is read the scripture. You see it right there. He's telling you right there. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil on, i man. the lord god do all these things so, brother, are you saying you don't agree with this scripture but what i'm going to move on to vocab that's oh, all i don't need your response i don't need your response let me just bro. move on to vocab i'll come back to it later all right yes you can come back to it okay, yeah, fair, fair. I mean, now the, i'll end up with this because i never said something about uh isaiah 40 45 in uh verse 7 i believe it is we talked about how god created evil now if you look at that we have to understand if i was having a conversation with jabari and i'm like you know if lebron james wins five more championships he's the greatest then lebron james is the greatest of all time if sonetta walks into the room as i'm saying lebron james is the greatest of all time he might be like, man hold up man y'all be tripping man it's michael jordan blah 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 and i would and i would pause him and say hey bro you didn't hear the whole context so i said to say context is important Likewise, when it comes to Isaiah 45, context is important because what you see in Isaiah 45 is a parallel where God says, I create light, darkness, I create, you know, good and I create evil. The context of that chapter is God is talking about how he deals with nations. I'm saying when God deals with nations, with, with the dealing with the nation of Israel, when they're aligned with the covenant, then God is bringing about blessing. However, God is also a God of, ju of judgment. So if people are doing evil, they're going right. He gets busy and he brings calamity. If you look at the he, no, you can smile if you want. Look at in the Hebrew. Test me if I'm wrong. Captain Desario, I believe, back me up on this one. As much as we might disagree with stuff, he's in the chat. If you look in the Hebrew, the word there is calamity. And every other translation that I'm aware of, other than the King James that you read, will render it as calamity because it's the better word that fits with the context of that passage. So when he talks about God creating evil, it's not talking about creating evil in the, the universal moral sense. It's talking about he creates calamity specifically in regard to judgment for those who are evil doers. Now, in order to refute me on that, you can't just shake your head. You got to go to the text and show me where I'm incorrect. Anyway, I'm letting Jabari go on, but I must say this because I caught the same thing that Jabari had. Adam, you keep on trying to act like the Most High did not create the evil that's in the city. Let me take you to Amos 3 and 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Be afraid. Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord has not done it? So, brother, do you believe in the book or you don't believe in the book? I I'm believe the God passages. I'm yeah. bringing you DNA after DNA of the scriptures and you still denying the power of your God. That's not I don't true. get it. Now, last part. Um, you said something about uh, uh, Satan being created evil, such and such, such and such. And again, I'm not trying to be disrespectful. And I know that you often will say, I, I, I'll put it this way. I've often heard you say, you tout like this knowledge that you have of Christianity, but then you make fundamental mistakes that are indicators to me that you don't know as much as you claim to know. And I say that in love with all respect. So when you say things like God created Satan, and if Satan's evil, then God created evil, what you're not understanding is, you know, they're bro, if, if you have been studying stuff for 30 years, then you ought to be able to talk to me about the, the way that St. Augustine worked through these things back in like the third, the, the fourth century. 
You know what I'm saying? That you should be aware of these things if it is the case that you're indeed as knowledgeable about the Christian worldview as you say that you are. So just like I can flex on you, just like you say, oh, well, Adam, you know, the, such and such book is a thousand years younger. I can flex on you, but like, oh, well, Jabari, this notion of evil being created was, was etched out and uh, addressed by Augustine back in the fourth century when he noted, as I said earlier, that evil itself doesn't exist in and of itself. Evil is a privation of good, just like cold is a privation of heat. Light, I mean, darkness is a privation uh, is the absence of I got it. light. I got it. So the okay. Most High was lying when he said he created good God evil. No, oh. what he said, no, again, so you keep going to passage that talk about calamity. Brother, so, you keep, you so speaking, wait, wait, I, I, I don't I, I, get what you're saying, bro. Watch okay. this. Watch Here's what this I'm saying. Like, Adam, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut it off right here. I got you. I got you. I'm going to cut it off right here. Watch this. What I'm saying is, if I broke into your house right now and threatened your family and you shot me, nobody would say, dang, man, Sasha so shouldn't have done that. Because I was breaking in your house and threatening right, something. Right. I was doing wrong. What's the point? Everybody the point would know is, that. The point is, you brought calamity to me, but you were justified in doing so. Likewise, when God brings calamity to nations that were doing wrong, he is morally justified in doing that because there's nothing wrong about judging evil deeds. That's what I'm trying to say. So when you read Amos 3.6, when you read Isaiah 45, those are examples of God taking action against evil doers, and he's justified in bringing calamity to them. Absolutely. 